Now previously, I released a video on the HP Z8 G4. We went through the system in immense detail. It's an incredibly powerful workstation that you can use to complete any number of modern tasks. But there was one thing that we could absolutely add upon, which is storage. What type of storage? NVMe storage. So right now in this video, we're going to take two NVMe's, the MSI Spacium 460's, and we're going to put them into a RAID 0 configuration in the HP Z8 G4. Full tutorial, take you through, show you how to set up the NVMe storage drives, how to even format them and get them ready to exercise whatever tasks you need them to complete in your system. Very important, I must uh, make this really clear. This particular adapter is very, very specific in application on this particular machine because this adapter is really unique. But that doesn't mean this has no value for you and your system because you can take the same NVMEs and put them in any other adapter. Now, talking about this adapter, this is the HP ZA G4's personality module. So this is tiny looking curious little device that actually allows you to connect two M.2 NVMEs to one PCIe X8 slot. What a cool looking device. Look at this. We've got this little heat sink, nice little mounting tabs, and overall a very elegant looking design. But uh, I'm going to take you through a quick process on how to install your NVMe. So hopefully you're ready for that. Now, I guess we'll see how well these things perform. I think they're going to perform really well, but put your votes in the comments. What kind of speeds do you think we're going to get out of this? Stay tuned, we're going to do full benching. But check it out, for now we can fit two NVMEs to this particular adapter. They can even be double-sided, so if they've got chips on both sides, not a problem for this adapter. It even does all the different lengths that you may run into, including the very large ones. Now, first problem that I'm sure you're aware of is cost. How did we manage to afford NVMEs in the modern day when prices have skyrocketed? You may have seen my related video outlining this whole crisis and where it all came from, and I even gave a whole bunch of solutions. Now, full disclosure, I feel like I broke my own uh, recommendation because one, I bought some. It's really just so you guys can see how to install them in your machine, I promise. But uh, also, these are like the exact model nearly that I said not to buy, and I bought them. Fair point. Don't read the fine print too carefully, but in this case, they're actually great value. That's why I went for them. This is the 460s. Really, really great NVMe, great value, good performance. And I guess we'll test to see if they stack up to modern day value. But anyway, let's remove our heatsink to begin with. We have to first clear these tiny little hooks. There are four of them securing our heatsink to the PCB. You see this little hook and latch kind of concept, very easy. But I will stress, you've got to be a little bit careful on the removal. There is quite a lot of tension applied to this particular heatsink residing over our NVMEs. Now, once you try to pry it apart, you may discover a little bit of surface tension. It may not actually want to budge. So just apply some gentle pressure. Over time, it comes off. Now, if you've got a keen eye, you may notice a mistake. That's okay. I made the mistake deliberately because it's like the only mistake you can make when installing these. You could leave the factory tape on top of the thermally conductive silicone, which just means it won't work very well, if at all, at cooling your NVMEs. So in this case, we will remove it. We will also remove these uh, NVMEs in here, which I will say are some really cheap NVMEs that I picked up off AliExpress. But check this out. This is the mounting hardware. These screws, really, really cool. They come with a little recess that actually fits into the groove in our NVMe. And there's our M.2 slot off on the far right, which allows us X4 connectivity for each NVMe, allowing maximum speed for that drive. Once we bifurcate this PCIe lane, but more on that a little bit later. But there it is, really easy, two of them removed. Let's go for our new Spacium M460s. We'll see if we can fit these in without too much trouble. Now, installation of our new drives, really, really easy. But I will stress again, the plastic coating, especially if you buy this adapter new, must be removed. 
Otherwise, you're just not going to get any good cooling. We want these to run nice and cool, and this adapter is quite capable. So first NVMe in, really straightforward. We want to keep an eye out for the M key, really important. Once installed, we use our little mounting screw, making sure to fit that recess into the NVMe. And then we're good to go. All we have to do now is install the second. Easy. Once we get our second M.2 fitted, we will have to make sure that we reinstall this particular heatsink the correct way around. It only goes one of two ways, so you've got a 50-50 chance. Now, very helpful here, there are these little white markings on the PCB. Check those, make sure to align them with the three standoffs on this particular heatsink. Now, once you've done this, there's one other trick that I like to employ, which is applying a little bit of pressure. I also like to align the far left first, find that point, then you'll see the rest of it just slots into place. But very important, I like to apply a little bit of pressure to the center of this heatsink when I try and latch, because these latches do operate under a little bit of a spring concept. So if you do accidentally slip, I mean, it'll just go flinging off and damage who knows what else, maybe bent CPU pins, who knows, you gotta be careful. So very important, once you've done that, I mean, that's it. This is ready to go, we can throw it into our machine and load it up and see how these things perform. Now, quick challenge for you, what would you buy? What do you think is the better value? Do we go for these branded MSI NVMEs in the modern day, or would you trust these AliExpress NVMEs of your data? Let me know in the comments. In this case, I guess I bought both for trial and error, but not so sure on those AliExpress ones. We'll see how durable they are. But anyway, the adapter's back in. It's actually really straightforward, couple of clips right at the end, and it's re-secured in that little tray mounted at the top. But that's it, it was really that easy. Now we want to see the data. What do these perform like? But before we can do that, we need to first initialize them. Now I need to introduce you to what is probably the coolest software for your HP workstation, HP Performance Advisor. Now this particular software allows you to monitor several features of your workstation. Like right now, we've got the block diagram. We can see everything connected to our motherboard. But that's not why we're here. We're here for BIOS settings. You heard that right. We're in Windows and we're gonna be able to adjust our BIOS settings out of Windows. Man, who knew, knew these workstations were so fancy? This is awesome. Now it is a little bit tricky because remember, these are pretty complicated systems. There are a lot of settings in the BIOS, so it's pretty easy to get lost. In fact, I'm gonna prove my point now by showing you how we get lost in the BIOS. So we'll try all these different settings. We're looking for PCIe slots. I mean, what would you label PCIe slots? Port options? No, that's SATA ports and all the USB ports. So no, it's not, not under ports. I guess it could be under performance. No, not under performance, but you want to make sure you're in performance mode. That's kind of important. Uh, oh, we could go device configuration, but it's not there. Oh, actually, Thunderbolt and USB-C, that's kind of handy. So make sure you've got uh, Thunderbolt functionality for those still using Thunderbolt. But that's still not PCIe. So where's the PCIe settings? Okay. Oh, there it is. Yep. System options. That was my fourth guess. So not doing too bad. This is it. Take note of this particular menu. You can set the speed of each PCIe slot. You're also able to activate bifurcation, that splitting of the lane, and you can do Intel's ROC, that's virtual RAID on CPU, but you do need to have a special adapter in order for that function to work. But this is it, this is where you would adjust it. Now right down the bottom is the personality slots. These are what we require, and you'll see it's already pre-configured because I'm handy like that, it's already ready to go. But this is for X4, X4 connectivity of our NVMe. So it splits up that PCIe slot into two, two sections or two clusters of X4, X4 connectivity. And check it out, we can even check out the temperature of our system. That's definitely running a little hot. Remind me to solve that in the future. But there it is, disk management. We can initialize our two brand new NVMEs. And uh, now we should be able to set them up in any way we should choose to do. Now we did say we were gonna do a RAID 0 and it's software RAID. Normally I would do it out of this menu, but in this case, 
I'm actually going to do it a bit different because some of you guys requested that I test out some storage spaces. So this is the day. And right now we can see our two NVMEs have been detected by Microsoft Storage Spaces. I'm going to create a simple, no resiliency, RAID 0 pool. And there it is, ready to go. We should have just shy of two terabytes of storage. And I'm going to test it on three separate benchmarks. This is the ATTO disk benchmark. That's only about 4,000 megabytes per second. And in this case, using Crystal Disk Benchmark, we're getting around 3,500, which isn't particularly good, given that we have two NVMEs pulled into one shared storage space. Well, I deleted that pretty quickly because that's definitely not the speeds that I'm after. And then I went back to my tried and tested method, which is creating in Microsoft Device Manager a new storage pool that is RAID 0. I repeated all the tests, but first, how fast are these NVMEs anyway? So I tested a single NVMe just out of pure curiosity to figure out, well, just how fast are these? Do we at least, at least get to the manufacturer specification? And indeed, we do. The third benchmark is actually DaVinci... Blackmagic Designs Disk Speed Test, which was also a really good test, but there it is. We're getting 3,500 megabytes per second read and around 3,400 megabytes per second write. But after this, I set up the RAID 0 pool using Windows Device Manager, and these are the results. ATTO was somewhere around 6,500 or 6,600 megabytes per second read and around 6,600 megabytes per second write. DaVinci Resolve, pretty solid results, somewhere between 3 to maybe up to 6,000 megabytes per second as well. So that's a pretty solid result for these NVMEs. Keep in mind, there was only two of them pulled together into one RAID 0 pool. If we took four of them, I would expect us to get a bit more speed. In fact, I have seen up to 12,000 on the HP Z8. That's 12,000 megabytes per second read and around 9,500 megabytes per second write for four two terabyte NVMEs pulled into one RAID 0 pool. So it is pretty fast. But that wraps up our video for the HP Z8 GeForce Quick Storage Upgrade using that very nice personality module. It's pretty straightforward. Now you know the process and you've got a little bit of data to back up how fast your system could be. But I do have a little teaser set up for future content. Sorry, I didn't mean to karate chop the microphone, but here it is. Give me half a second, it's really difficult to reach and it's actually kind of dangerous because uh, I'm having to lift this around and if I drop something I could destroy this build and if I destroy this build you'll never see it so oh that's delicate really really delicate okay got it oh sorry knocking into the microphone not good now I know what you're thinking what on earth is this I mean there's wires and loose components and I mean what on earth is this well I call this a Frankenstein mini PC because well, I mean, aside from the obvious visual cues, it does look kind of Frankenstein-ish, but it's just a, a cute little nuss with a cute little mini PC. But the goal here is very simple. This is meant to be a really powerful, and I say powerful, it actually has 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connectivity. It's not connected now, but I will do so eventually, don't worry about that. We have uh, a whole bunch of SSDs locked away in this little cabinet here. In fact, it has retained its full functionality because these trays come out, there's uh, SSDs mounted in here. I'll show you that in a future video, how to mount them up, but uh, they're all connected to our mini PC using this as a little storage bay, and this used to be a NAS, but I stripped everything out of it and turned it into an empty shell. Don't worry, the NAS wasn't working anyway, so no harm, no foul. But this has created a really nice platform that will allow for lots and lots of RAID storage in SSD format and a low power draw system that can be run 24-7. And my goal is for it to use somewhere around 25 watts of power, despite having a phenomenal amount of storage space. So stay tuned for that. We'll see if this system is any good. 
thus far works really well so i'll see you on the next video stay tuned out there and man i'm excited for this project let's see how it performs <laughs>